I imagine life on other planets is fragile, fleeting. On Fenrir, it's similar, but much worse. Life is precious and way too short. Every day is just another step toward your grave. Now that war has come for Fenrir, your life can be gone in an instant, and most Fenans won't remember your name. A lot of people talk about the battle on the top of Mount Shair. It's called the battle that shook the world for a reason. A legendary confrontation between Ingvar and Kazai before they were rulers, before they would spark the war that would change everything. Those two will never die because even when their bodies return to Fenrir's soil, their names will be cemented in Fenrir's history. Do you know what people never talk about though? What happened to the top of Mount Shair after the battle? What came next? Truth be told, the aftermath of the battle between Ingvar and Kazai left the mountain even more unstable than Fenrir. Many people tried to go up there just to touch their feet on the same ground as those two legends. But there was some type of magical barrier preventing people from going to the top. The first few to try were called delusional, that it might just have been too thick of air for them to handle. Remember, people consider Ingvar and Kazai godlike. If any Fenans could breathe all the way up that mountain, then it would be those two. As rumors spread about the top of Mount Shair being unreachable, other Fenans were quick to take on the challenge. They all returned with similar stories, and each time they became more and more ridiculous. One Fenan said that they hit a magical ceiling that wouldn't let them continue. Another said there were arrows that shot out from the mountain and almost knocked them off. One even claimed he heard a deep, mystical voice that warned him if he went further, he would die. The more crazy these stories got, the more they piqued my interest. One day while I was working in my shop, I overheard some people in the town square talking about people gathering at the base of the mountain. I closed up early and headed out there to see what the commotion was about. When I got there, I saw numerous male and female fenons stretching and preparing themselves. At this point in time, only a single fenon would attempt going up the mountain at a time. Stories never mention a group of fenons. I assumed that was the plan here. I waited at the base. I had no interest in going up myself, but I was curious if they could do it. I introduced myself to some of them. If they were to succeed, I would have liked to be a small part of their journey. I offered to get them supplies if they forgot anything, and offered some words of wisdom. I didn't have much experience when it came to climbing legendary mountains, of course, but I considered myself in decent shape and provided some tips on surviving the trek up. After a few moments, they began to go up the mountain. At the start of the mountain was a trail, so it was enough to get you started. Who knows what it was like after that? The stories were all different, but most didn't even mention a trail, so I would assume at some point there isn't one anymore. I spent a good portion of my afternoon there waiting for them to return, and after a few hours they did. I tried to count how many there were when they got back because it looked like there were less of them. A solid observation on my part because it was the case. Two of them didn't return. The ones who did were covered in sweat, and the less fortunate ones had scrapes, bruises, and blood. They all were helping each other walk and stand. The emotional journey they had been on took its toll, and when I asked what happened or what went wrong, they could not find the words. I had brought a bag with me unsure of how long I would be there. Took a drink out of it and handed it to one of the Fenons who went up. Take your time, I said. When you have the strength, I would love to know what happened up there. The Fenon took a long drink and said, When we got to the top, we heard a Fenon screaming, he began. Then we heard fighting and monsters roaring. I heard the roar of a dragon, another of the Fenons who went up spoke. No, no, that had to be a demon, said another. The footsteps of another person arriving on the trail behind me startled some of the Fenons who went up for a moment. We all turned to the dirt path leading to the base of the mountain. An old man carrying a bag walked up to us and placed it on the ground. I'm afraid you missed all the action, friend, I said. These are the brave souls that attempted the journey up Mount Shair today. Can't say I'm here for them, said the old man. I was told by my friend to come back in three days. As if the old man judged the timing down to the second, a large roar from the top of the mountain made its way all the way to the base, 
and all of us took a step back except the old man. Wind swept across the mountain base around us. The old man grabbed my wrist, since I was closest to him, to steady himself, but it actually felt like he steadied me instead. The battle between King Ingvar and Lord Kazai on the top of Mount Shair may have shook the world, but whatever just transpired up there now brought the world, at least my world in this moment, to a complete stop. The wind stopped to the point where the air around us felt still. We stood for what felt like forever in the most eerie, dreadful silence. Then a man made his way down the trail connected to the mountain. He had no shirt on and long red baggy pants. He was wearing no shoes on his feet. His long black hair was slick with sweat and his forehead was covered in both dry and fresh blood. One of his eyes was closed with three slash marks as scars that went from his brow through to his cheek. There were markings on his torso that extended to his arms and neck. At first I thought they were tattoos, but it became clearer that whatever happened to him on the top of the mountain made these new designs on his body. The last thing I noticed about him was a weapon in his hand, a katana with a fine crimson red blade, its handle a golden dragon. Who are you? I found the courage to ask. The old man let go of my wrist and made his way over to the one who came down from the mountain. King Ingvar and Lord Kazai, two legends praised as if they were gods. The old man turned to face us and took a deep breath. Praise those false gods no longer, those who bring war and destruction to our beautiful lands here on Fenrir. Instead, turn your attention here. Take up arms and defend the land which Jakari the elf god blessed us with. Stand beside your savior and take back what is yours. Stand beside Jiru, the dragon of Mount Shire. <laughs>